unthinkable crime. A gorgeous 11-year-old girl snatched from her bedroom in the middle of the night and brutally murdered. Tonight, justice for Sarah Haley Foxwell. A sex predator is charged with her murder. And now in a breaking development, the state says it plans on seeking the death penalty against her alleged killer. Her photo was haunting. Big green eyes, a happy smile, the little girl, nicknamed Haley Bugs, disappeared just days before Christmas. Thousands of volunteers searched for Sarah, hoping to find her somehow alive. This is a sick, sick detail. She was last seen wearing fuzzy Christmas tree pajamas. Then, a grisly discovery. Authorities found her burned body in a desolate field on Christmas Day. Her mom broke down. I opened the front door and walked in, and I saw my father on his hands and knees, and I knew it then. He didn't have to tell me I knew. So I just fell down beside my father, and I just, it was just, it was horrible. Sarah's six-year-old sister witnessed the abduction. She described the intruder who snatched Sarah to police with painstaking detail, right down to the color of the shoes. And then police got a real break. The little girl said, Tommy took her. Tommy, here's that. It was Tommy Legs, a registered sex offender in two states and the former boyfriend of the girl's aunt, who Sarah and her siblings live with. Legs was initially charged with kidnapping and burglary. Police needed time to gather evidence before charging him with murder. He has also been charged with first and second degree sex offenses. You get the idea. This is revolting. I want to hear from you. Call me. Why does this keep happening? 1-877-JVM says that's 1-877-586-7297. How can we stop it from happening again? Straight out to my fantastic expert panel, Judge Greg Mathis, host of the wildly successful Judge Mathis Show. Criminal defense attorney, Stacey Honowitz. Always good to have you, Stacey. Psychiatrist, Dr. Charles Sophie from Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. And investigative journalist, Michelle Sagona of michellesagona.com. But joining us by phone, we begin with WBOC reporter Elizabeth Harrington. Elizabeth, what is the very latest? Well, Jane, the very latest is, again, there was a murder indictment to, uh, yesterday. It was announced today, along with sex offense charges against Thomas Legs Jr. And as you can imagine, this has certainly been a big relief to Jennifer Foxwell, the mother of Sarah, and her family, and also this entire community. This is a case that has really shocked and saddened everyone in this area. And, in fact, one of uh, Sarah's sisters... His birthday, 18th birthday, was just yesterday, says this was the only thing she wanted for her birthday, to see the man who was accused of killing her sister, to see him charged with murder. Now, Sarah and her siblings were sent to go live with their aunt. Sometime in 2008, they were removed from their mother's home by the Department of Social Services. Let's listen. I was going through a really rough patch in my life, and I chose to place my children um, with my family because it was in their best interest, really, to be there. Um, I couldn't properly care for them at the time, and it was the best place for them to be. I knew they were loved. I knew they were taken care of. Um, they had what they needed, wanted, and it really, they were happy there. A beautiful little girl, really a gorgeous child. Sarah's aunt told police she dated 30-year-old Thomas Legs for a short period about a month before Sarah was abducted. It's not clear, Stacey Honowitz, if Sarah's aunt knew her boyfriend had a criminal past, but should the Department of Social Services have done more get digging given that they took the children away from the mom and she apparently agreed to it and uh, didn't fight it and gave the, the children to the aunt, should they have then investigated and found out who is this aunt hanging out with? Well, certainly, Jane, I just want to clear something up. I'm not a criminal defense attorney. I supervise the sex crimes unit in the state oh, attorney's my, office. My, so my, my office is that I'm a prosecutor, and I yes, prosecute these are. cases. And uh, the bottom line is absolutely social services, when children are placed or taken out of a home, have to do a thorough investigation, a home study, into where the kids are being placed. 
Now, I don't know if this mother, uh, the mother saying she voluntarily gave up these children, and I don't know if the sister at the time was aware, uh, hopefully, she, I hate to say that she wasn't aware that this man was a sex offender and allowed these kids to come into the house. But certainly, when social services, like I said, does do a placement, it is their obligation and their duty to check and make sure that the household these children are going to is safe. Yeah, and by the way, you're not only the supervisor of the Sex Crimes Unit in the Florida Prosecutor's Office, you are the author of a fabulous new book called My Privates Are Private, which helps parents and children prevent child sex abuse. And congrats on writing that. My big issue tonight, the enemy within we found Thomas Legs on the Delaware Sex Offender Registry. He is there for the rape of a teenager. He is marked as a high risk. So what the hell was he doing hanging around with a woman who is a legal guardian of six children? This isn't the first time we've seen this. Here's another tragedy to tell you about. You remember this one? Little Nevea Buchanan was snatched from the parking lot of her apartment complex and murdered. Her case remains unsolved, but investigators looked at two registered sex offenders who had befriended and were hanging out with her mom, Dr. Charles Sophie. Do these predators seek out women who have kids and romance them in order to get close to the kids? They definitely do. However, you have to remember these women have to be aware of the fact that they're dating these kind of men. They need to know who these men are. When Children's Social Services, which is what I run here in Los Angeles, when we place a child with a relative, we do criminal background checks on anybody who's in that home. But if this guy was not in that home, then he's not going to be checked. Women need to be coming forward if they're going to watch these uh, kids. Why not, check? why not do a little background work? I mean, you know how many millions of dollars it's going to cost taxpayers to prosecute this guy? Why not do a little background? Why not give the Child Protective Services a little more money? And maybe a private investigator to do a little background check when they plop six kids into a home and find out who the heck is the new guardian's uh, dating. Well, sometimes they don't say they're dating. If we don't know they're dating or they don't come forward with that information because they may know that criminal's background history, they don't want to be forthcoming, they let them in the house. Oftentimes we don't even know it, but the criminal background check is an absolute must that has to be done. PJ, Massachusetts, your question or thought? Bless you, uh, Jane, uh, for all that you do. Uh, I have never been one to uh, believe in the uh, death penalty, but in today's society, I think it's disgusting that we have to pay for these sex offenders and they get an education, and I think we should either uh, um, uh, casterize them or put them to death because they'll never recover. Uh you make a very good point. It's a harsh point, but it's a good point. Judge Greg Mathis, you founded the Peer Initiative. You uh, did time as a teenager and turned your life around to become a lawyer and a judge and a TV star. Uh, but we have talked many times about the fact that our criminal justice system is all screwed up. We're locking up kids who are not violent criminals, turning them into violent criminals, turning... Uh, basically the incarceration of a huge percentage of our population mostly poor and minority into an industry a growth industry and yet the very few people that we absolutely should not ever let out of prison ever meaning convicted sex offenders those people somehow end up roaming the streets able to prey on young girls yep absolutely one of the things i believe is that uh, sexual predators of uh, pedophiles uh, is really a an extreme sickness and that being the case we have to prevent ourselves from uh, being victims of that sickness so I think they should obtain lifetime probation therefore the probation officer checks on where they're at who they're living with they inform those persons who are there who they are around as a term of their probation forever that's what I believe they don't. they don't. Do I agree with you. Everybody yeah. stay right where you are. More on this really horrifying murder of this precious child in just a moment. And we're taking your call.